a science. Yes. But I want to say to you today, if you're holy yes. and you're righteous yes. and you're sincere, yes. then you yes. shall see God. Yes. That's what the Word says. Yes. He tells us that if we present ourselves holy and, and, and sanctified and righteous before God, that God will honor that. Yes. Yes, he will honor that. Yes, Lord. Oh, Lord, He didn't tell us to be self-righteous. Because yeah. a lot of us Christians yeah. are self-righteous. Yeah. If somebody don't do something the way we think they should do, in regards to what the Bible says, then to us they're not right. Jesus. You know, we spend a lot of time judging people. Amen. And I want to say that the ultimate judge is Jesus. Yeah. And we're all say going so. to stand before His judgment. Yeah. Say so. The good, the bad, and the ugly, and all in between, yeah. will stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Yeah. Oh, glory to God, glory to God. I thank God for this. Yeah. I thank you for this opportunity because it just helped me to just get into the word. It just helped me to see that it's not what we say or do. Yeah. It's what he says and does through us as yeah. we present our bodies as a vessel. Yeah. As we just say, Lord, here I am. Use me. Yeah. Pour into me what yeah. you have for me yeah. to have. Yeah. And you know what? You don't have to worry about nobody else's ministry. No. You don't have to be competing. You know, you just complete your work. Yes. You just do what God tells you to do. There is enough work to be done to get everybody home yes. to heaven yes. so that none of us yes. have to worry about doing nobody else's work. Amen. As a matter of fact, most of us are overworked and underpaid. We do the cooking, we do the cleaning, we do the preaching, we do the sweeping, we do whatever's necessary in the church because that's what God has ordained us to do. And you know what? Nothing is too big or too small for us to do. You know, some people don't want to open the door. Some people say, well, I'm not going to sweep. I had a pastor once tell me, I asked his wife to bring in our elders and escort him, and he told me, he said, my wife can't do that. She's a pastor's wife. And I just looked at it and I said, and I'm thinking to myself, so am I, but what does that have to do with everything? The higher your position in the church, the more servant you should be. That's what the Somehow or another, we have misconstrued it. We have special quarters and special seating for our bishops. Sometimes they set up a way and, and elders and things. Sometimes they're not where the, the, the well, how do I want to say it? The, the members of the church, their parishioners, can't even come up and talk to them. Sometimes people say, don't bother them right now. They eat. Don't do that. Don't do that, honey. You see them later, and then when later come, they push them out the door. That is not biblical, and that is not what God wants us to do. Hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. He wants sometimes for the bishops to serve you. Serve our mothers. Hallelujah. Serve our, our, our senior citizens. Serve our children. Hallelujah. Don't you know that when you come down and, and become a servant, then you learn what holiness really is. Yes. Jesus yes. washed the feet of his disciples. Yes. What did he tell them? No, Lord, not me. Mm. And Jesus said, well, if I can't wash your feet, then you're not going to no place in the kingdom. Right. Peter changed his tomb real quick. Well, Lord, not only my feet, but all of you. We understood the repercussions of not allowing Jesus to do what was necessary. Right. So see, sometimes God puts us in situations yeah. to place us there so that we can get ready for really where he has for us to be. Yeah. And in order for us to be women standing around the throne, standing before the throne of God, and, and try to picture in your mind God. Jesus. He's not this magical spirit that was going to be flowing through the air, but he is God. Yeah. He is the one that spoke and everything started running. To, to reach his command. You know, they say Darwin has a theory that there was a big explosion. Well, I agree with that. But the explosion wasn't what he thought. The explosion was the water crashing together, crashing into the hills, and the hills crashing into the land. And everything was crashing, trying to run to get into its position. It's prospective place. Yeah. The water was trying to get where it's supposed to be. The water, the mountains was trying to get where yes, they were supposed yes, to be. Yes. The sun was saying, let me get up in the sky. The moon said, let me, no, let me get over there. And the stars. Yeah. Everything was rushing. Yeah. Do you know that everything listens to God but humans? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, no. The birds, as soon as the sun starts to rise, the birds chirp, 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 singing. I mean, everything listens to God. The water. 
I remember when we were in Greenville, when the tornado or whatever was coming here, the hurricane, yeah. and I remember praying, God, take the fizzle out of that so by the time it hit Pennsylvania, it don't have no more steam. Amen. Yeah. It tore up down south. It never came to Greenville where we were, Amen. but it came straight on up north, and by the time it got to New York and Philly and all the things that they said it was going to do, it didn't do. Amen. But don't you know it didn't do it just because it ran out. It didn't do it because God said, all right, that's enough. Amen. We'll sit down somewhere, and I'll call you when I need to do it. <laughs> You may not believe that. Yes. Same way with in Mississippi. Jesus. When God got tired of foolishness, the ladies didn't just break on their own. He said, all right, let go. Yes. And the flood came. Yes. Amen. God was sick of sin. It was like Solomon and Gomorrah. Yes. And I'll tell you what, and I feel for Pennsylvania and all of us people that are here that are Christians. If they try to pass same-sex marriage, we better get up and fight that with all we have. Because I declare, right. if you don't... Yes. The wrath of God is going to fall on Pennsylvania. Yes. Yes. What do you think it was in New York when that was coming? The wrath of God. Yes. They had just passed that law. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Jesus. And Delaware, okay, she's telling me in Delaware. Yes. Oh, God, we all best to start praying. <laughs> I know, but you can pray it undone. I'm telling you, you know, we take things so lightly. Yes. Mary and O'Hara, we're going to take prayer out of school. Mm. Christian said, oh, she'll never be able to do that. Prayers out of school, and what happened? The devil that came in the school says they took God out of school. Now the devil's in there. Okay, we must be saved. When, when he was in school, the first thing he went through was, uh, was you had prayer. And so it's the same thing when we used to read the Bible every morning. We sang songs, we went to the auditorium. Now as soon as you walk into school, you're going through a metal detector. Amen, amen. So see what happened when you take God out of the picture. Things start to happen that we cannot control. Amen. We don't understand how vicious the devil is. And when you give him an inch, he will take a mile. And then he'll take, you know, more than you're able to control. So I'm saying to you, don't allow him to take you somewhere in sin that you can't go. And what I mean by that, he makes it look so nice. Oh, it's all right to have sex. Excuse me if I'm getting too personal, but I'm a real person. Preach, preach. It's all right to have it. Surely you won't get AIDS. Surely you won't get pregnant. Surely nothing is going to happen to you. He doesn't bother to tell you that the person that you get ready to sleep with have all these spirits from all the other people they they with. Okay. Okay. And all those spirits are going to jump on you. And you're going to wonder why in the middle of the night you fighting somebody and you don't see nobody. <laughs> Gonna be those spirits, hallelujah, that you don't know nothing about. Hallelujah, that you didn't entangle yourself with. Hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. We're gonna try this, try this for a week or this blunt. You, you won't be hooked. You'll be all right. You know, and I feel for our young people because they fall for that. And you know, you don't have to be young. He wasn't that young. What the devil tell us? Surely you shall not die. You know, the Lord showed me that he's a snake in the grass. You ever, ever encounter a person that you know is a snake? Yes. They so slimy that you can feel the grease on them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
When he came to Philadelphia in July, the word will work for you. But you know you got to work the word. Right. If you don't never throw the word in or tap into the word, it ain't going to work for you. Say so. You got an inheritance of a million dollars, but if you never go down to the bank and make a withdrawal, you have it, but it's just sitting in. And after a while, if you don't do something with it, the bank will find something to do with it. And you won't even know they did. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So I want to say to you in going to my seat that I think it's going to be glorious. And I know that a lot of us, and I'm going to say all of us, is going to make it to heaven. I believe that. And I believe that we're going to be those women in white standing at the throne. How they need to thank you, Jesus. But you know, in order for that to take place, we've got to start a commitment right here and now. Yeah. We've got to say, I'm sold out for Jesus. Yeah. No matter what come, no matter what go, I'm going to stake my claim and I'm going to go on and be who Jesus intends for me to be. And understand that he has a destiny for you. You know, people, when you say destiny, people say, oh, everybody on the destiny trip. Let me tell you something. Before you was conceived in your mother's womb, before your mother was conceived in her mother's womb, and her mother's womb, God already knew who you would be. Amen. Now, he was giving us free will of choice. Don't misunderstand me. I'm not saying that we are robots and we got to be who God said we have to be. But I'm saying he has an ultimate, glorious destiny for you. Yes. And you know what's so great about it? It ain't even that much of a struggle. The struggle is when we try to make things happen. You know, we say, well, I'm going to school. I'm going to be a lawyer. Well, maybe God didn't intend for you to be a lawyer. Maybe he wants you to be a doctor or a nurse. So you got to go through all that time spending money, going into law school, and then don't pass the, the bar. Where if you went into nursing school, you would have passed it and went right on it. And on top of that, God would have gave you money for your tuition. Amen. I know what I'm talking about. How do you I was in a communications and theater at Temple. I, had, I was paying for that. Transferred over into the school of education after my first semester. For five years, I never had to pay another thing. Scholarships and grants. And a classmate said, you know, if you can go to school for it, at least half time, you can get a grant. So I said, what's half time? <laughs> she said, well, six credits. I said, well, I think I can do that. So I said, Lord, what? can I do that? You know, because I had little kids, and he let me know I could. And I went and signed up, and I was talking to the financial aid person, and she said, you know, we probably could get you a scholarship and, and a grant and stuff. So I said, I don't know. I think my husband made too much. So I told her what my husband made. She's like, child, please. She said, the white girl just got the other day. Her parents make $150,000. I said, oh, praise God. And I mean that, so don't never underestimate God. Don't never think that God can't open doors for you that appear to be closed. Or that if you're in a building and there is no door and no window, don't think God can't create one. Amen. Visible, that reigns and controls the spirit realm. Hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. And believe it or not, the spirit realm is subject, or should I say, the natural realm is subject to the spiritual realm. If God say, let there be light and light spring forth, don't tell me God can't say, let there be a door and a door can't. I just want to encourage you here at this church because you are doing such a wonderful work. I mean, you can see the evidence of it. And I've been in your presence and I felt the anointing and the Holy Spirit all upon you, Pastor. All upon you. I'm going to call him a pastor too. <laughs> and your wives. I, I felt that. And the members that come with you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. There is no limit. No limit to what God has in store for you. You just keep on being humble like you are. Keep on being just a vessel. You don't question how God used you, do you? I know you don't. You just let him use you. Whatever he tells you to go and do, that's what you do. That's the kind of servant God is looking for. Amen. And when you're like that, you're going to find yourself one day, hallelujah, in a church with so many people, you're going to say, God, send me somebody to help me count all these Jesus. And I was watching the first lady, so humble, so sweet, running all around, trying to do everything to make sure 
that the program is a success today. Amen. Amen. That's what God